Welcome everyone to the FLIR G Series launch webinar. I am Marty Major from the Sales Enablement Team, and I'm here today with our Director of Business Development for Optical Gas Imaging, Craig O'Neill, who's going to be telling you all about this cool new camera. Using the questions section in your GoToWebinar overlay, you can ask questions either during the webinar or at the end in Q&A. So let's get right to it, and I will pass Craig the mic. Craig, it's all yours. Marty, thank you. And thank you everybody else for joining us on this webinar. We are excited here at Teledyne FLIR to announce and introduce the new FLIR G series optical gas imaging portfolio to you. It's been quite a few years since we've had a complete revamp of our optical gas imaging cooled camera portfolio. And we are super, super pumped about this product and being able to talk about how it's going to work and what all this product does. In essence, this is the replacement of our flagship and industry leading GF series that launched in 2009 that includes the GF320 and even the GFX320 that was our first ATEX certified camera uh, that we launched in 2017. What's unique about the G series camera, which we'll talk about throughout this webinar, is how we came about to develop this camera. This isn't just the FLIR guys and the engineering team sitting together and making a camera that they feel as though is right for the market. We spent multiple years taking feedback from our customers on where the camera can work better, what we need to do to ensure that a camera is the most efficient camera for the optical gas imaging user. And we developed a camera after we took that feedback. We listened. And then we took action. What we like to say with the G series is that together we've raised the bar. Again, we've established the bar since the gas blind IR in 2005 when we launched the first commercial optical gas imaging camera. And ever since then, we have been leading the optical gas imaging industry on ergonomically friendly and, and technologically advanced optical gas imaging cameras. We asked our customers over the last few years, what do you like? And we even asked the hard questions. What do you not like? Where can we make our cameras better? I'll highlight a few of those here. Some of the feedback we got is that the camera needs to work a little bit better in rough environments. The display sometimes is overexposed and sensitive and the, the viewfinder may get hit while you're walking upstairs or on a catwalk. Uh, and it has trouble when it gets hit numerous times. The battery door can use improvement on how it operates uh, in, the, in the, the hinge that it used to open it. Those of our customers that use the quantification tool that we've had for years in the QL320 didn't like having to have a separate device. And the wireless communication that we've had in our portfolio really has been lagging technological advancements in wireless communication. But one unique answer that we got across the board with most all of our customers was something surprising. As an engineering company and engineering organization, we like to kind of be on the cutting edge. And sometimes that means we revamp how the camera looks, it feels, and how it operates. But a consistent feedback from the users we talked to, our power users, if you will, was that they wanted to keep a similar and existing design and button scheme. They knew where their fingers would go and they knew what those fingers would do when they hit a button. And they didn't want to change that for their users. So the first thing we started with with the hardware design, we looked at the camera and we wanted to ensure that we could maximize efficiency. We put a side mount display similar to what we had, but one that, that articulates better and is easier to use. We understand the cost of an optical gas imaging camera. We want to make sure that you can protect your investment. We have enhanced the viewfinder. We got the feedback. We listened and we took action and re-engineered that. It now seats into the camera and is protected uh, while you're using your camera in the field. But we also wanted simple interaction with user-friendly design. We wanted the operators that grab this camera to be able to understand how to use it easily. And not only using that, we wanted to make it consistent with other FLIR products. And then we took our ergonomics and we made them better. This has been a unique piece where we've really separated the FLIR cameras from the market 
uh, over the last few years, and we decided to increase productivity. We re-engineered an LCD screen, one that actually will completely flip back and, and seat into the camera, as you can see in some of the images there. You can now streamline inspection processes with a touchscreen display. Some of these features within the camera, utilizing a touchscreen display, may even allow you to meet future regulatory requirements. And then again, simplification. We made the operation of the camera with the rotating hand grip and the sleek feel of the camera uh, easier to use and make it where when you're in the field, the operation is simplified. And we also include the GUI of the camera to make it easier to use across other FLIR platforms. So like I said, we really took a top-down approach to our, our development, our design, and our engineering of this camera. We took it from the feedback, we listened, we took action, and together we've raised the bar again. So as we look to simplify it, we took three foundational principles in the development process of this camera. We wanted to make sure that it had the most advanced features as it replaced the industry leading GF series. We wanted to make sure that we built upon the success that we've had with that GF series popular camera portfolio model and ergonomics, and we wanted to make it better. Things like adding a 640 by 480 resolution class one division two or zone two camera, touchscreen LCD, field exchangeable optics. Again, we made it better. But we didn't just wanna stop and remake a camera. We wanted to add groundbreaking technology into the camera that will actually change the industry today and tomorrow. If you like quantification and you need to quantify your leaks, now you can do that directly in the camera. No need for a secondary device. You can actually record multiple files easier with a groundbreaking technology called multi-recording and other features like a Delta T isotherm with a simple touch of a button. But as I mentioned in the beginning, we also understood where we were in our ecosystem for seamless integration for wireless technology. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, those wireless technologies that we had been lacking in some of our previous models, we had enhanced those, enhanced the GPS capabilities within the camera, and now the camera is going to be much easier for you to work with, uh, either with FLIR software or potentially with third-party mobile SDKs to help you meet regulatory requirements for your LDAR team. We were often told, don't fix what's not broken. Make sure that the camera meets the EPA requirements and other regulatory requirements that are inside the camera. So in essence, we did. We took the engine of the old camera and we did not change that engine so that we can ensure that the specifications and the way this camera works does not change. Our customer base said we want to ensure that it meets the same ATEC certifications or hazardous location certifications that we had in the previous GFX model. So we did that and we added ATEX and HasLock certifications into our 640 by 480 model. But we also have some of our history, our patented high sensitivity mode or HSM feature and the FLIR ergonomics were things that we didn't want to change. But we did want to make great even better. We understand that this is a, a, an investment for you and for your organization. So we set out to make sure the camera can be used in rugged environments for our OGI operators. Now we don't recommend uh, throwing it on the ground like this, but we made sure that the camera can handle these types of scenarios. If you're a legacy FLIR IR camera user, now the GUI on the touch screen will match the cameras that you may have been using for a number of years. Since the touch screen is easy to use, the operability of that touch screen is the same whether you're using a C5 camera that costs a couple of thousand dollars or whether you're using our new, brand new G-Series GX320 camera, you're gonna have a consistent feel across the entire FLIR portfolio. 
And then we expanded the field use to allow multiple lenses, even for our ATEX versions. Now you can simply change the lens while you, if you have that GX320 model. And we added additional lenses like an FOV6 or a six degree field of view lens for our SF6 or sulfur hexafluoride G306 model. But we did add advanced new features and some of these have been in some of our IR cameras and some of them are completely new to the market. One of those is one touch level and span where when you put the camera in manual level and span, you simply touch the LCD screen, you'll see this small circle popping up. And what this is doing is it's doing an automatic level and span adjustment, but only taking into consideration the hottest and coldest temperature inside that small circle you just saw. We listened on usability of the HSM bar and we added an HSM adjustment bar. So now instead of just simply clicking a number, once you activate the high sensitivity mode within the FLIR camera, you simply pull the slider bar up and down and you can adjust the sensitivity of your HSM much easier with this touchscreen. We also added some features that may help our customer base meet regulatory requirements in the future. Things like sketch on infrared. Right now, as an example, the United States EPA doesn't require a video to be recorded, but they do require effective documentation to show what is leaking and where that leak is coming from. With sketch on infrared or sketch on IR, you can simply draw an arrow on the screen or draw a circle on the component that's leaking within your screen. And then a very, very big topic in the optical gas imaging industry right now is Delta T. And with this new camera or the new G-series camera from FLIR, if you would like to simply check the Delta T of your image, there's a toggle on and off button on the Delta T function within the LCD screen. So you simply touch that and you'll see in bright red where you may not have enough Delta T. The goal of this is simply to ensure that the majority of the image or the majority of the image where you're seeing a leak come from or you need to uh, diagnose or you need to do your LDAR inspection has sufficient Delta T. But as I mentioned earlier, we do have some groundbreaking technology in here. And one of those is quantification in camera. This is the, the screen of our mode wheel. And as I turn the mode wheel and turn it over to quantification, now I've got this in a manual level and span, and you can see you that utilizing the one touch, but within the touch screen, I can scroll through to all the parameters that you need to set and quantification and being able to choose the predominant gas in your composition or in your, in your stream, and then just simply telling it, what color plume do I see, black or white? And when you're done with that, you go down and hit start measurements. You'll need to keep this camera steady, and then in five seconds, the process will start. In this process, it begins calculating the actual uh, leak rate. In this case, we're doing it in parts per million meters. And then it begins colorizing and measuring that leak. Right here, we're in our lab simply showing this and uh, the, the, the different colors may change. And when it, once it's done actually formulating, it will begin documenting and then you can view summary. And the summary is very basic. It is simply a JPEG file that allows you to see the number, the parameters that you put, and a screenshot of the leak itself in a single frame from the quantification process. Another feedback we received from the industry was a challenge when you needed to record multiple types of video files within your optical gas imaging camera. For example, if I wanted to store a couple of seconds of a visual and a couple of seconds of a normal or just a regular IR optical gas imaging uh, video and also needed to store some of the high sensitivity mode that's patented from FLIR, I would need to simply turn the camera on, hit record, find the buttons, push the buttons, maybe turn the camera sideways. But now we've added a feature called multi-rack or multi-recording. Within multi-rec, you simply go into the menu system and you tell the camera how many seconds of visual, how many seconds of general or normal infrared, or how many seconds of high sensitivity mode you'd have. In a quick example here, we have four seconds of 
visual and you'll, you can't see where the leak's coming from the middle of these pins. But even when I tap, toggle this and the, the, or don't toggle this, even when the, the process moves to thermal, you still can't see the leak and you'll just simply see it much easier when this high sensitivity mode happens. But one thing you'll notice is that all you have to do is hold the camera steady. The camera will do all the recording process and it will, it will toggle the different uh, video types from visual to IR to HSM automatically. But we understood that productivity in the field is not always just about the camera. So we made everything better. One of the things that we got some feedback is that we didn't like taking out the battery charger in our truck or in our office. You've got to take it out, plug the batteries in. Now you can simply plug a charger in the wall and you cannot close the lid of the case, but you can plug the charger in the wall and lower the lid of the case and the batteries can charge in the camera without ever having to remove the battery charger. Little things like battery status indicators so that you know before you leave and go out to the field that you have fully charged batteries as you're getting out there and you, you know the last thing you want to do is get out in the field and not have a battery completely charged and ready to go for your inspection. We talked about wanting to secure the camera and make sure that every part of the camera, the eyepiece and everything was secure, not only in the camera itself, but also in the case. And within that case, now you can work more efficiently. You can actually flip the LCD screen backwards, put it into the camera. And if you wanted to open the archive files and add some text comments, add some sketch marks with the touch screen, or any of that, you can actually do that in the case while they are on the camera while it is in the case. And we did hear that, that sometimes these cameras can be heavy when you have all the accessories in a case and the case itself. So now we just simply added some wheels on there. There are customers of ours, maybe you're a service company and you have to travel through the airport getting from customer to customer. And now carrying the case is even simpler than it ever was before. We really did revamp our digital ecosystem, adding Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to the camera and enhancing the GPS. That allowed us the capability to integrate a unique feature called FLIR Ignite inside the camera. And what FLIR Ignite is, this is our internal cloud-based solution so that you can store files in the camera and easily have those on the cloud. This solution, has been in our other handheld cameras for some time. So for the last few years, you could take an infrared image from some of our other cameras, simply take that image, and as soon as you reach a Wi-Fi connection that is already logged into your camera, that data is completely uploaded to the cloud. We also have FLIR Ignite Sync, so that will allow you to seamlessly pull that data all the way down to a desktop. All we did is we added all those features directly into the FLIR G series portfolio. So now if you're out in the field and maybe you're out in the field and you have the camera and you can connect it to your personal hotspot on your phone, you could take a video of a critical asset that might be leaking and within moments that actual recording would be available in the cloud and through Ignite Sync that would be available on a desktop back in your office. But there are other communication options that may be critical to this industry or this unique optical gas imaging industry. One of those is the ability to just utilize the Wi-Fi stream so that you can sync the camera to a third-party app and then at that point in time that third-party app can sync itself to its third-party cloud device. That'll just be via a third-party mobile platform, and we do have uh, we do have the capabilities and the SDK to allow you to have the camera and to allow apps to be made to easily communicate with this camera. Something we've been able to do for a while, and you still have an SD card storage on the camera, and this is still available in our GF series today, where you can pull the data down and match the videos after the fact 
But another unique thing, because the camera has Wi-Fi, now we can just simply wirelessly transfer the data to a network or to a computer uh, through Wi-Fi. Of course, we've talked about the FLIR Ignite and the Ignite Sync, the ability to, to utilize the FLIR cloud, which we do provide a minimal amount of cloud storage with a purchase of a G-Series camera. And while it's not available today, we are looking into how to do a third-party cloud-to-cloud API or cloud-to-cloud -cloud transfer. We have a variety of applications and industries that we get into. And so from the utilities to our oil and gas markets, which are some of our top ones, we also have steel, manufacturing, uh, power generation, and, and utilizing our CO2 camera to look for hydrogen leaks as a tracer gas. And if you look at our current portfolio, we cover all of these industries with a variety uh, of products within our portfolio. We are proud to announce that we didn't just replace one or two cameras. We replaced every camera within our cooled optical gas imaging portfolio and now have these available even with a new camera in the GX620 a class one div two or zone two rated 640 by 480 optical gas imaging camera from FLIR. If you think about this, we have the carbon dioxide for the utility industry. We have a carbon monoxide optical gas imaging camera uh, for that, that critical steel industry. The oil and gas, we have the hydrofluorocarbon for the refrigerant gas camera and also our SF6 camera, which is our flagship camera for our utility industry. And if you look at that utility industry, we now have the most complete solution with the entire umbrella of what FLIR can offer. Through our software, we can do FLIR Route Creator and we can utilize that feature in the G-Series camera. We have a camera now in the G306 that can do optical gas imaging it can do full electrical and mechanical inspections at a substation. And now it has the full complement of technology from Wi-Fi to Bluetooth to, to cloud-based management. Easily and seamlessly uploading that to our FLIR Ignite by simply connecting the camera to either the hotspot on, in your truck, on your phone, or wherever you are. And then you have all the data immediately accessible on your computer through Ignite Sync that you can analyze the imagery in the FLIR Thermal Studio to ensure that you get uh, the report out as fast as possible and be as efficient as you can be. Now we're ready. We are ready for you. We're ready to talk to you about uh, this new G-Series camera. And to be honest with you, we've got cameras ready to ship today on most of the models. The ATEX or the Class 1 Div 2 or Zone 2 uh, certified cameras will be available for shipping uh, in late April and early May, but we are extremely excited about this, and we even have some of these guys ready to go get out the door. They're all looking for new homes. So what's next? We want you to go to our website. You feel free to learn more about all of the features in the new G-Series optical gas imaging camera from FLIR. Uh, go to FLIR.com forward slash G dash series. Have a full line, some videos on, on the features and the capabilities of the camera itself. We have more data and some updated brochures on the OGI solutions in various industries, like the entire suite of FLIR solutions that we may have in the oil and gas industry across the entire supply chain. But if you have questions you want to reach us, the easiest way is simply shoot us an email at inspresales at teledyne.com. You can call us at 603-324-7600 and speak to a professional. But if you'd like to just reach out to me, you're welcome to. It's craig.oneal, that's with two L's, at teledyneflare.com. Again, we are excited to talk about this. We're excited to get, uh, get out to meet our customers, show them these new features this new portfolio and realistically help the industry get better and more efficient as it relates to using optical gas imaging cameras in your daily inspections.